Ever wish you standard light switch could do a whole lot more? Today we're making a single device that works as a light switch, a nightlight, sunrise simulator, presence detector and a general I.O. controller for home assistant. All wrapped up in a unique decorative design that should be compatible with most standard electric car boxes. Ready to see how it's done? Let's jump right in! The switch from the intro happens to be in my kids' room, as you can probably tell from the Pupatro character. I needed a night light and a presence detector, because the little guy never turns off his light. So I figured, hey, why not build my own gizmo instead of spending extra on separate sensor, a smart switch and a night light? There's that classic line, why buy something for 20 bucks when you can blow up twice as much making it yourself? Of course, I'm talking about the R&D phase. Prototypes, tests, trials and errors always eat up the most time and money. Now, each new unit is a lot cheaper than any comparable device off the shelf. The main function, of course, is to turning the lights on and off. A light switch is one of those things that's been around forever and probably won't disappear no matter how smart our homes get. You can swap it out for motion or presence sensor, a read switch or even cameras with image recognition. But it's still nice to have a basic manual control over your lights. Naturally, you can flip it remotely or via home assistant automation, but you can also use it as a standard wall switch. All the touch detection and relay driving logic is handled inside of the device itself. Another feature is presence detection using a microwave sensor. It's a much better alternative to the passive infrared sensors. Thanks to its sensitivity, it can even catch your chest moving while you breathe. You can adjust the detection range for movement and presence, so you'll know if someone's walking towards or away from the switch, or just hanging out in one spot, like when you're chilling on the couch watching Netflix. Plus, you can tuck it behind the housing, so it's totally hidden, which looks nicer and it makes harder for potential intruders to mess up with. Another unusual add-on for light switch is high brightness RGB LEDs. Besides the usual find the switch in the dark glow, I use them as a night light in my son's room. But they could just as easily serve as a small stair or bathroom light in the night. Yet another possible use for the LEDs is a sunrise simulator. About a year ago I discovered an alarm clock that slowly gets brighter about half an hour before you wake up, so it's less jarring when it's time to open your eyes. I've heard there are studies backing this, of course I haven't read them, but from personal experience, it really does make morning suck less. So I figured I'd try the same thing for my kids. Maybe it'll make preschool mornings a little easier. Since most of you watching my channel are probably into electronics and smart home stuff, having a Wi-Fi in wall switch probably doesn't blow your mind. But let's face it, it's still not the norm. The Wi-Fi connection means every button press and the readings from the microwave sensor, the RGB LEDs and the relay status all show up in Home Assistant. So you can do with all of that whatever automations, scenes or scripts you like. There's one more aspect that a few years back I wouldn't have cared about. But now that I'm not living alone, all my DIY gadgets have to pass the does it look good enough test from my better half. Sadly, a breadboard with wires and electric tape just won't cut it anymore. And that's why this switch had to look at least somewhat nice. The front panel is made of clear acrylic and you can engrave just about anything on it. Your kid's favorite cartoon character, labels, logos, abstract characters, you name it. Plus, you can slip any background behind the acrylic to switch up the look even more. Let's jump into some build details so we can make your own glow switch. Like I said, the front panel is acrylic that I cut and engraved with this CO2 laser cutter. It's perfect for acrylic. Diode lasers, the cheaper ones, don't do well with acrylic, especially transparent ones. Xtool kindly sent me their P2 laser, which has completely opened up new creative possibilities for me. While they send it to me free of charge, they have absolutely no influence over the content of this video. But honestly, I can't say a single bad word about it. It's freaking awesome. Without it, I couldn't have made this project, which I've been thinking about for two years. I tried using CNC router, but getting smooth edges for good LED backlighting was no go. Now I can whip up new panel in just a few minutes. And since I have ton of ideas, check my store, I've kept this laser busy.
I split the device into low and high voltage side, which should be tread with caution. A side boards with LEDs are attached to the main board that holds the ESP32, the LD2410 microwave module, the touch button and the rest of the components. The second PCB is the relay board. Depending on the components you solder, you can run it on low voltage from 8 to 28 VDC or straight from mains. In my place, most of wall electric boxes have an Ethernet cable running to the central hub. More about this hub here. So I have access to some GPIOs and 12 volts power. That's why all my glow switches run on low voltage. But don't worry, I also made a version that's powered by mains. It has extra safety measures like a varistor and a fuse to protect against potential failures. Additionally, the ACDC converter I selected is equipped with built-in protections, including overload, overvoltage and short circuit safeguards. Now let's talk about the main component that makes it possible to turn the lights on and off, the relay. It has a lot of advantages, like being able to handle high current, switch both DC or AC, and it has low resistance, so it doesn't heat up much. On the downside, it makes a little click when it switches, it has limited mechanical life, and it's quite slow. Unfortunately, that means you can't use it to dim lights. However, the track board is already in production and a track is perfect for dimming lights, assuming of course your light bulb is compatible with it, so an upgrade is on the way and if you don't want to miss it, you know what to do. Speaking of PCBs, a big thanks to JLCPCB for sponsoring this video. They made board for this and all my previous projects. I was using their services long before I started creating stuff on YouTube. If you want to build this glow switch or any other PCB related project, I really recommend them. They can fabricate the boards, solder them and even 3D print your enclosure. And we haven't talked about the enclosure yet, but part of it is printed on a classic FDM printer and part on a resin printer, aka MSLA. JLC can pretty much handle all of that for you. Just upload your Gerbers, adjust some settings and in a couple of days you'll have a nearly complete device on your desk. Just assemble everything and you're done. Thanks JLC PCB. The enclosure design isn't super complicated. The visible part is done on a resin printer, giving it almost factory-like finish. The rest of the enclosure is FDM printed. Since it's hidden anyway, it doesn't really matter how it looks. But for that I use PETG V0 filament. What's special about it compared to the normal PETG? Let me show you. V0 is self-extinguishing, so if it catches fire, it'll put itself up. And that's a nice extra layer of safety. It's a bit more expensive, but I think it's worth it if you are dealing with the mains voltage. If you want to change the look of your switch, you don't need any tools. Just pop off the frame, swap out the acrylic plate and the image underneath and you are done. It takes maybe 10 seconds. If you are feeling fancy, you could literally change it up every day. Let's talk about software side of the project. I'm a huge fan of Home Assistant and ESP Home, so there was no chance I'd use anything else. But don't worry, I won't bore you with the config details right now. You'll find everything on my website. Link in the description. In a nutshell though, each switch has two outputs you can control, the backlight and the relay, plus a few inputs depending on how you configure the microwave sensor. In my case, I have four of them. All of these appear as a separate entities in Home Assistant, and what to do with all of them, it's totally up to you. But to give you some inspiration, here's how it works at my place. In my son's room, it works as a nightlight. The brightness adjusts itself depending on whether he's still or starts moving around. 
possibly waking up. Additionally, on weekday mornings, it works like a sunrise simulator. It starts gradually brightening at 7.30 am and reaches full brightness by 8 am, just in time for him to wake up. In the bathroom I set it differently. When it's dark and the motion is detected, it glows softly. Just enough so I don't fully wake up during a late night trip. In my workshop, the switch is tied to the doorbell. When someone rings the doorbell, in addition to sending alert to my phone, the switch's backlight pulses red. Of course, it could be totally different in your case. It all depends on how you've set up your room. But I'm sure there are tons of other ways to use glow switch. So if you've got ideas how to use it, drop them in the comments. I'm super curious. And now, if you'd like to see how I physically read the GPIO state switched by the relay, make sure to check out this video next. This hub is the central part of my smart home. You could say it's the heart of it. Smart home is the brain, but this hub is its heart.